same strategic plan as, as the federal state government because that's where you're going to find the most grant dollars. That's where there's a lot of low interest loans is around projects that are involving renewable energies. So it gives you more to work with when you're talking about financing a development project down the road. The other thing that's important to recognize, check time, important to recognize with uh, solar energies is it is starting to uh, it's starting to gain a lot of momentum in the private sector. And if you look at 2008, just in the U.S., uh, over 10 percent, like 10.8 percent, of the venture capitalist dollars spent in the U.S. were spent directly on solar technologies. So this is something that, although there are a lot of, of uh, policies out there driving the development of solar technologies. There's also a lot of private dollars being invested right now, and that's a good sign that you know that's an industry you want to align yourself with. And then there's a number of different projections out there that say it's going to grow you know 40 percent annually over the next decade. And so you know those I kind of take with a grain of salt. But when I see facts that say there were you know this many billion dollars spent, uh, private dollars spent, and in, in, in solar technologies, that goes a long way. So. That's one of the reasons that it's it's nice that we can start to teach this in our in our schools and, and from a couple of different angles. Uh, a, just understanding the technology, but B, you're looking at um, you know if, if the state wants to have 25 percent renewable energy by the year 2025, there's going to be a lot of jobs out there for for maintenance, upkeep uh, type service jobs, I guess, around renewable energies as well as the manufacturing and then. <coughs> Other, uh, I guess one of the other things that we're looking at, and in respect to time, we're gonna, I want to leave time for questions, so I'm going to pass these out. Um, what this is, this is kind of going back to, I only have two, so I, hopefully you guys can share and pass them around there. But, um, but this is going back to my opening statement with the Business Retention Expansion Program working with business attraction. Excuse me, road strike. This is an example of our, I guess this is our first business attraction program. And since we had this project come along, it's a, it's a big marketing piece. We've had a lot, I mean, we've had international um, buzz around this project. Our website, Wyandotte County Economic Development, which is another thing that we've worked uh, very hard on in this first year to get up and really give us a presence out there on the website, on the uh, internet. Our website is, I mean, we're not counting website hits by tens and twenties, we're counting them in the thousands. And we have people visiting Wyandotte County Economic Development website from nearly every state in the country, and then, I mean, a handful of, of, of different countries in Europe, we have Southeast Asia, Australia, so there's really been some international interest around this project. And. Um, we're, we're trying to utilize this and, and, like I said, use it as a springboard to capitalize on it. How can we turn this project, which has a lot of benefits in itself and is a, is a re revenue generator, how can we capitalize on this and turn it into some jobs? And that's what this is all about. We've, we've researched the solar industry. Uh, UE Solar has been a big help with us in, in doing that as well and trying to expand our network into the solar industry and get to know who's making what parts and, and who's working in, in certain companies and you know whether a company is or is not looking to expand. But one thing that is, is very well known in, in the solar industry is that there are not enough panels to fulfill the demand for all the projects that are in the works right now. So these companies are looking to to expand. So, is it anything solid right now? No. But, you know, our stance is we would rather be proactive and try to build a case around this and, and take a shot at it than just sit back and do nothing and, and hope that the state sends us a lead or that somebody drives down the road and decides they want to put up a shop here. And what we've done is identified over 200 companies, and when I say identified, I mean, I'm, we're not just pulling a name out of a hat and saying, oh, they have a solar SIC code. We're actually contacting these companies, finding out who is the decision maker, um, you know, who do we need to send these packets to, and making sure that we get them in front of the right person. Uh, we're actually this stuff. You're the first group that's seen it. I just got this stuff from the print shop last uh, Friday, so 
um, Antoine School in Industries is going to help us uh, organize them and put them together, and then uh, we'll be we'll be mailing them out uh, over the next couple months. And it's going to be more than a one-time shot. You know, this will be something that we'll have to um, maintain. We'll send it out. We'll follow up and and uh, try and get our name in front of these companies in a couple of different ways. But the thing that's really nice about how the BRD ties in with this is <coughs> if this works and if we were successful, and this, these are all ifs, I, I, I can't stress that enough. I'm not in the business of creating false hope. I don't want people to think that, it, hey, we have a new shop coming in town that's going to make solar panels, because I'll tell you right now, that's not the case. That's what we're working towards. But, um, you know, the idea behind it is we want to attract, we want to try to attract businesses that will help strengthen existing businesses. And you'll notice in there, um, the right side of this packet is really focused on the bare uh, facts around Wyandotte County. Our transportation infrastructure, our railroads, our um, workforce development, uh, universities, having six universities within a 30 minute commute, that type of stuff. The left side of the package really focused on the solar industry. It talks about policy in Ohio. This, this, the, actually, Senate Bill 221 is the third most aggressive policy in the country around renewable energy. So the state of Ohio is really taking a strong stance on, on this, uh, as I mentioned earlier. But uh, in addition to that, you'll see, uh, in talking with National Lime and Stone, they are the, one of the largest glass batch dolomite suppliers in the country. And, um, I learned this through a, a BRD visit with them and asked them, does your raw material get used in the production of an ultra clear float glass? Now an ultra clear float glass is the main component of, of a photovoltaic solar panel. And of course there's, I mean, thousands of different types of photovoltaic panels. But in general, the ultra clear float glass is one of your major components. They said that, uh, yeah, actually our, our product is used in the production of those types of, of materials. And you know, so I asked them, I told them, explained to them what our business traction packets were all about and, and asked if it would be okay if we designed uh, a little marketing flyer for um, National Lime and Stone to include in this. And what we're trying to do is, is build our case for these manufacturers to say that, you know, we know that they're at capacity and they need to expand. We're trying to say expand here. We have a supply chain. We have National Lime and Stone pulling the raw material right out of the ground. And you know, the next step, I guess, from that would be, uh, I, I was had a meeting with Guardian's plant manager and was asking him some of the same questions and said, you know, I know what you really focus on here, but does Guardian as a company do anything with, with solar technologies or ultra clear float glass? He said, yeah, we do, and I explained to him the same thing. I said, would you be interested in, can we, can we list you, and would it be accurate to list you as an asset in the supply chain of a solar panel? He said, let me do some check, and I'll get back with you. Two days later, he called and said, the vice president, the CEO, or CFO of Guardian want to come down and meet with you to talk about this project. I said, excellent. So we, we sat down at our Woody's, and I kind of had a, a real rough draft of what this is looking like, things I just printed off my printer in, in the office, and they said, absolutely, we, we want to be a part of this. And they said, a matter of fact, we have, I think it's five or six different different types of products that we're already making and selling to solar manufacturers. We're just making them in different plants. Um, we have the capability to make them here, but they're, you know, it doesn't fit in our business mix right now. There's not a demand for it. Um, but if you guys are successful in bringing a plant into Wyandotte County, by all means, we most certainly would move some assets around and we would be able to produce all the clear float glass panels for you. So now all of a sudden, when you look at this from, from their perspective, Wyandotte County might stand out a little bit from some of the others. You know, we have, first of all, we have excellent distribution capabilities with intersecting four-lane highways and we're, I believe it's within 500 miles, 60% of the U.S. manufacturing. Um, three different railways running through here, so the, the core necessities are here. And, and then you look at a nice marketing piece by having an 85-acre solar generation facility, and now within a 15-mile radius, we can pull raw materials out of the ground and turn them into an ultra-clear float glass panel. Um, boy, we really start to, to build our case that if you're going to invest, this would be a good place to do it. And so 
That's an example, I guess, of the next phase of 